In my last video, you will have seen me changing the turbo on this 1987 Volkswagen camper here. Well, all did not go according to plan, so let me show you why. So firstly, the engine leaked all of the fluids. So it leaked fuel, it leaked oil, and it leaked coolant. And not one of them was a small leak, they were all fairly big leaks. So I did a little bit of investigation off camera, and this is what I found. The cam cover was leaking. So there's now a new gasket in there, that job is actually done. So straightforward enough, pop it off, clean the surfaces, new gasket, away we went. Okay, so that's done. The other thing is the coolant leak was coming from the coolant uh, neck that goes on here, which was actually cracked. I ordered a new one off some arsehole on eBay that seems to think that 15 days before even shipping it is an acceptable time before shipping. So uh, the new one hasn't even arrived yet. I don't. It, it, he only shipped it a couple of days ago, so I swear to God I could actually have driv driven over to Latvia and collected it and brought it back then in the space of time it's taken him to send it. Crazy stuff. And he seems to think that I'm the unreasonable one by actually... Uh, criticizing him for this and giving him negative feedback anyway that's just a little rant of mine so uh, anyway i'm still waiting on the, the new coolant neck however i have actually repaired the old one with jb weld and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fit that one today and when the new one arrives i can i can fit that but uh, for the moment anyway at least it gets the van back on the road and here folks is the reason why the fuel was leaking that hose was installed three years ago and look at the state of that now, interestingly, this isn't actually one of the fuel leak-off lines. The fuel leak-off lines were the same, and that's why they were leaking. This goes to the N75 solenoid for the turbo. Which leads me to my next point. The turbo was not boosting properly at all, and was uh, the, the engine was pumping out black smoke, and uh, it kept going into limp home mode. So, as well as getting a whole new set of hoses, and incidentally, that's the Coline hose. It's supposed to be a decent brand, and... Uh, yeah, three years is all I got out of it. It's not like it's got ethanol-based fuel going through it or anything like that. It's diesel. And actually, in actual fact, that, that was a pneumatic hose. So it's not even, it, it's none of those things. So you just can't win when it comes to, to modern rubber products. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, anyway, the other thing as well then is I have heard a couple of horror stories of people about the crowd that I got to, in, uh, to overhaul the injectors for me that they use cheap Chinese rubbish components inside them and they don't last any time at all. So I have to pull the injectors out and get them re-overhauled again but there's another crowd I can use to do them who uh, uh, yeah, seem to know much more about what they're talking about. So okay, I've skipped ahead a little bit. So that's the um, the new leak off hose installed there. It's Gates hose and I've always found Gates to be decent enough but there again, I could be proven wrong on that one as well. Um, so that's all in. Um, the injectors, I actually pulled number four injector because I was just concerned that maybe the leak was actually coming from around the base of the injector. It wasn't, but what I was concerned about was the amount of uh, carbon on the injector for, really, I mean, this engine does not have high mileage on it at all since I actually got the injectors done. So, yeah, another reason to pull the injectors. I'm going to put a fuel additive in as well in this process. But next thing to do is I'm going to get that few, that uh, coolant neck installed. And for the moment, I'm just going to top it up with water because uh, I will be replacing it with the other one when it arrives. All right, so here's the repaired coolant neck that uh, I've fixed with JB Weld. As I said, it's only a temporary job, but uh, I, I hold out good hope that um, uh, that will work. Oh, and yeah, by the way, that is a tech screw in there. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little port there for reasons i don't fully understand so i had to block it off and the tech screw actually does the job perfectly so uh, anyway that's that done and i've also cleaned up the flange down there as well for it to mount onto so uh, and, and plus as well i also have a new o-ring so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use some of this loctite flange sealant smear it onto the o-ring stick the o-ring in there bolt that on stick the hoses on bish bash bosh thanks very much good luck to you flange sealant never quite cures and that's kind of what you want it stays flexible in this instance so it's ideal for this job at least i've used it with good success in the past anyway all right so the coolant neck is refitted and the coolant system is all topped back up with uh coolant again um so that's all done um i actually changed out the uh the uh, rubber hoses the, the leak off lines here for slightly smaller but in, internal diameter ones and they just did they, they fit a lot snug uh, a lot more snugly onto the barbs 
so uh, less likely to cause a leak there. They're not stretched, but it, it's uh, I think it's supposed to be that size. Um, we were probably a little bit too big with the other ones. So anyway, right, that's that done. Next thing we want to do is to address this little lad here. Now this is the N75 solenoid, and basically it controls the boost from the turbo. And um, yeah, this one I suspect may be faulty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it out. I have a new one here. Now the new one is a slightly different di design unfortunately that being said we should be able to make it work and um, the pipe fittings are larger actually which is somewhat annoying but uh, anyway look we'll figure it out as we go along Um, next thing to do is take this one out uh, it's just actually held in there with a tech screw so yeah we'll we'll pop that out and this one here doesn't actually have a bracket as such it just has this little tab on it it, it probably is supposed to go into a kind of a fitting on the on the vehicle Um look we can put a cable tie around it and hold it in place it'll be fine okay so here's where things are going to start getting a little bit interesting and um, the first uh, the first thing to note is that the engine should technically be leak free at this point in time or is it see the thing about it is is the fact that you can you, you can count air leaks and uh, pneumatic leaks as leaks as well and that's what we're on the hunt for now at this point in time so um what we're going to do is apart from the n75 solenoid and the hoses that go to and from it being replaced there is also the sense line that goes to the intake uh the the um the inlet pressure sensor so we're going to be uh we're going to be changing the pipe that goes to that because it's that crappy co-line hose as well and uh, i'm really annoyed about that i mean that's supposed to be good quality hose and i wouldn't mind i actually did a video about uh, poor quality fuel hose and stuff like that and a couple of people came back in the comments saying that they used coline hose and found it good so it's one of the reasons why i went with it i wanted to try it out for myself it's not it's crap it's absolute shit to be honest with you so um yeah anyway uh we're gonna we're gonna swap it out and um, now i have two uh, two different bores of hose here and it's not the braided stuff this time as you can see um so what i can do is for the larger bore stuff what we can do is we can we can actually just put it in a uh, a little bit of uh, hot water and that will make the rubber more pliable and we'll be able to get it over the fittings on the new n75 solenoid and uh, then it should just uh, slip onto the um the, the barbs on the turbo and on the inlet pipe right so the three fittings wastegate turbo housing and the long one here is the uh it comes from the inlet so that's atmospheric supposed to be a little bit lower than atmospheric because it's actually uh, it's it's where the draw for the air for the engine coming in uh, comes in actually so yeah anyway right so that's um so that's what we need to connect up so i'm going to go and put some hoses on them and i came over all project binky and made a bracket as well so there's a uh, at least it'll be held in place properly and this ladies and gentlemen is the reason why you don't buy cheap chinese garbage and you buy the genuine article It just popped off when I was trying to put the bloody pipe on. So uh, that uh, tears the arse out of that idea then. So I'll, uh, I think I'll just put the old one back on, but uh, with new pipes. So that's uh, a little annoying. I think what I will do is I'll source a new one, uh, a proper Bosch one. And uh, I think they're supposed to be Bosch anyway. Um, and uh, get the one with the smaller pipe barbs. They're supposed to be like three down one side. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway right look it is what it is okay so all of the rubber lines uh, throughout the engine that uh, i used this crap on have been replaced i mean there's the uh, that was the one for the map sensor that's inside the uh it actually goes over to the ecu the map sensor is inside the ecu's case so um that's been replaced now as well obviously as well as the uh the uh, sense lines for it the, the, the pressure lines for the n75 solenoid it's just unfortunate the way that solenoid went but to be honest with you i i did bench test that one there now and it does seem to operate so look we'll just have to hope for the best it certainly can't be any worse um let's just put it that way so what i'm going to do is now, uh, now is i'm going to take it for a spin uh well i want to just start it and bleed out the uh just get get a bit of extra coolant into it and everything and check everything over and then once we've done that then we'll take it out for a spin see if there's any change and hopefully there is and then further down the line what i'll be doing is getting the injectors uh, overhauled again and um yeah fingers crossed let's see uh, let's see how it plays out okay 
why exactly it's idling like a generator, I'm not entirely sure. Definitely a bit of smoke coming off it there as well. But that could be just crap built up in the exhaust. Let's just see now. There we go. I think it does that sometimes when the uh, when the alternator when the battery is low uh, and the alternator is drawing an extra bit of current. I don't know. Anyway, right. Look, let's see. Let's uh, check everything over here. Everything's looking remarkably dry in here, which is amazing. It never is. Right. I'm going to let it tick over for a few minutes anyway. Just kind of. Uh, that it takes stock of itself and then I'll get it out on the road once I'm happy enough that everything is the way it should be or at least close enough to it. I haven't got my VCDS cable so what I did was I have a Carista uh, app on my phone but I scanned it and it helps me. I scanned it and it says ECU scan one false found nil. Hmm. Well that's positive I suppose. In fairness that Carista thing is pretty decent. I've uh, I've used it on a lot of other cars. Uh, the only ones that doesn't tend to work on are Mercs. It's as if they have something to hide. Right, anyway, so uh, it's all looking good. Uh, the, puddle under the puddle underneath it is, uh, is just from uh, when I was pouring water into the engine and spilled all over the place. Why is it haunting? Let's just have a look and see. I'll scan it again. Oh, it's still coming up with no faults. So, who knows? Anyway, right. Hunting I can live with. I'm just curious to see. I think that, that little solenoid is actually clicking away there. I just want to do the old stethoscope method. Hose in the ear. Yeah, it's clicking away there. So, it's doing stuff. There's a little misfire in it. Have a listen to this. And then that's those bloody injectors. Right, I'm going to throw the fuel out of the bin and we'll get the injectors overhauled again anyway. But for the moment anyway, let's, uh, let's just leave it at that. Right, so it's had its wash now, so it's looking a little bit more presentable. So let's get it out on the open road. Okay, so the turbo is definitely doing something. It's not going to limp home mode. And it's driving all right, but it's pumping out smoke big time. So that suggests to me the injectors are in bad need of overhaul. So I'd say, uh, I'd say that's going to be my next port of call anyway. But uh, yeah, look, at least it's kind of at the point now where I feel like I can actually use it to some degree. Um, but yeah, let's see now. Oh, the black smoke out of it. It's every colour smoke, to be honest with you. Well, black and white, it's kind of weird, like. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, look, it's what we set out to do anyway was to try and kind of rule out the, or to eliminate the issues with the uh, uh, thing going into limp home mode and sort out all the leaks and it's fair to say that all that's done now so uh, happy days so uh, yeah um, I'm just going to get out onto the main road here now and kind of give it a proper burn and uh, see how uh, see how it fares out I wouldn't say it's exactly pokey now but it's moving I don't know I think uh, I think there's still a bit more investigation needed in here um, as I said I'm a little bit lost with the VCDS software like you know I mean it's uh, it's kind of a difficult one but uh, look I'll try and uh, I'll try and get that sorted out anyway, at least we can get back, uh, uh, get, uh, get to the bottom of this issue, the uh, issues with it. So uh, yeah, look, I'm going to leave it there, folks. 
and uh, I'll uh, pick this up in a future video. But uh, yeah, more progress anyway. At least we're getting, we're going in the right direction. But uh, yeah, sure. I'm still, I'm still kind of leaning towards that N75 solenoid actually needing replacing. I think I will actually pick up another one. But uh, look, it's motoring, and so long as you're kind of not too heavy on the accelerator, there's no smoke. But anyway, right. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.